Hello and welcome to the Aero-V engine assembly video series. I'm Joe Norris at Sonics Aircraft LLC. In this series of video segments, we are going to walk through the assembly of an Aero-V engine. We will be following the sequence called out in the Aero-V assembly manual. The manuals get updated much more often than the video series. So if there is a case where the manual and the video series disagree, your manual that came with your engine is the guide for you to follow. But in general, all of the steps that we have in the manual will be shown in the video series. We hope you enjoy the video series. We hope you enjoy putting together your Aero-V engine. And we look forward to seeing your airplane flying. Before we start working on our engine buildup, I want to talk a little bit about tools. If you start out with a basic mechanics tool set, you're going to have a pretty good head start on what you need. A socket set, a quarter inch drive and three eighths drive, and maybe even a few larger half inch drive sockets in standard. Uh, what you may not have are some metric sockets. Of course, this is a Volkswagen based engine, so many of the fasteners on the engine are metric. So we'll talk a little bit about that as we go. The other things you're going to need um, will be torque wrenches, which you may or may not have, uh, and some other basic tools. So I'm going to start on my table here. I have a, an array of tools laid out, and I'm going to start on my right and just work my way across the table here and talk a little bit about each of these uh, tools that I have laid out in front of me. Over here we've got our torque wrenches. Uh, you're going to need a, a, a pound inch torque wrench for some of the smaller measurements. We have some very small fasteners in a couple of places where it's, it's easier to measure your torque in pound inches. Uh, also a pound foot torque wrench that will go up to at least 80 uh, pound feet is going to come in handy for a wide variety of the fasteners you used. And then for your flywheel gland nut, you're going to need the big daddy torque wrench that goes up to 227 pound feet. Uh, in order to uh, torque that uh, flywheel gland nut. So you're going to need one big one and then a couple of smaller ones on the torque wrench side. Of course we talked about sockets so uh, drivers for your sockets are good. Quarter inch drive, three eighths drive, half inch drive. I have those available uh, with your socket set. Uh, if you haven't done engine work before you're probably going to want to go out and get a uh, ring compressor for your piston rings. Uh, we will be uh, pulling the pistons out of the cylinders at some point and measuring uh, end gap on your piston rings. So you will need to be able to replace those pistons in the cylinders. So you'll need a ring compressor for that. When we do our crankshaft assembly, there's a, a large snap ring that you have to install on the uh, crankshaft uh, when you put the timing gear on. So you'll need a set of uh, external ring uh, snap ring pliers, the type that when you squeeze the handle it opens the jaws like that. So squeeze the handle opens the jaws. You'll need that for the uh, snap ring on the uh, crankshaft. Some hammers will come in handy. Uh, most everybody has a kind of a mechanics ball peen hammer like this. Uh, you also are going to want a soft face hammer. We have one here that has a plastic uh, head on one side and a rubber uh, head on the other. That comes in real handy. Couple of places you're going to need a drift punch to help you seat some uh, some items. We have here a uh, an aluminum drift punch, so we know we're not going to mar our parts uh, when we use our aluminum drift punch. I laid out some metric sockets here because again, many of you may not have a metric socket set. Uh, there are a, a number of metric uh, fasteners that we're going to be working with, so you should be prepared for that. I put out the most common ones here. We have 10 millimeter. 13 millimeter, 15, 17, 19, and 21 uh, are the real popular ones that we use on the Aero V engine. So those uh, for sure you want. Uh, obviously, if you buy a, a complete set, you'll have those. This one won't come in a complete set, and this one is uh, for your gland nut again. Uh, for the flywheel gland nut, this is a 36 millimeter socket that you'll need along with your uh, big torque wrench in order to properly torque the gland nut on your flywheel. So that one's a specialty item you'll need to pick up. Another socket you may or may not have will be a, a socket that you can use for your spark plugs. A lot of the spark plugs that we use in the uh, Aero-V engine are actually 11 sixteenths. Um, so this particular socket is an 11 sixteenths socket. Uh, Certain spark plugs, depending on which brand you buy, whether it be uh, NGK or Autolite or whatever, may not all be 11 16ths, but a, a fair number of them are, so an 11 16 spark plug socket would be good. 
There's a number of places in our uh, engine buildup where you use hex keys, commonly called Allen wrenches. This particular set here is a, uh, an English uh, hex key in, in fractional inches. It wouldn't hurt also to have a metric set of, uh, of hex keys available. There might be a couple of places where that'll come in handy. So uh, some hex keys will help. And then uh, you'll need a uh, impact driver and uh, obviously a compressor uh, air source to run that with. There's a few places where we're actually going to use an impact gun to seat some parts. So we'll have a, an impact driver available. There's certain places where you'll need a um, feeler gauge to measure clearances on uh, bearings and valves and whatnot. So a, uh, a feeler gauge set uh, is going to be necessary. Make sure you have that. And then we have a number of different sealants and lubricants that we'll run into that we'll use beyond their basic motor oil. Uh, one of the sealants we'll use in a few places is the high temp red RTV silicone uh, sealer. We'll have a, a few places where we use that. Number of places we're going to use some Loctite. We have our red high strength Loctite, which we'll use in various spots, and our medium strength blue Loctite. On the Loctite products, the uh, earlier Loctite products are all numbered based. You'll see 262, 272, or whatever. But now that Permatex has uh, taken over that Loctite product line, they've simplified that and they just go with uh, the color. So you have red Loctite as your high strength. Blue Loctite is your medium strength. Those are the two that we'll run into in our build, so uh, be prepared for that. Another real popular sealant we're going to use uh, in a number of places is our Aviation Forma Gasket number three. Now this particular one is a, a little jar that has a brush applicator in the cap, which I particularly like. It, uh, it really works out well for a lot of our applications when building the uh, AeroV engine. Uh, it's also available in a tube, uh, something like the RTV tube, uh, just with the aviation former gasket in a paste form. That'll work as well, um, but uh, I particularly like the, uh, the jar with the uh, brush applicator. It seems to uh, do a little bit better job in some of our areas, so either one will work. We have white lithium grease, which we'll use as an uh, assembly lube uh, for our uh, bearings when we're assembling our engine. Some uh, mechanics like to use uh, engine assembly lube of various types. Uh, your favorite lube is good. You need to make sure you lube those bearings. We use the white lithium grease. And there's a couple of places on the engine where we use a Molly lube. Uh, the particular one we have here just is it a grease cartridge like you might buy for a, a grease gun. Uh, this stuff is also available sometimes in a tub like the uh, white lithium grease is here. So either way, some Molly lube will, uh, will come in handy for you. Beyond that, uh, your basic mechanics tool set should be able to take care of every need that you have. There are a few fasteners that are English fasteners. Uh, some of our connecting rods use an English 12-point uh, socket instead of a metric. Uh, some use metric depending on what supplier we uh, uh, procured those particular set of rods from. So there's a few variations, but uh, if you have these tools along with your basic mechanic uh, or homeowner's tool set, you should be all set.